doing? My name's Tommy, and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue, and uh, it's chilly. It's about uh, 7 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning. We got some snow on the way, but I got a seven pound point Wagyu a brisket on the Pit Boss 16 Hunter. So uh, yeah, good morning. And it's gonna be a good day. So look, basically what I'm gonna do here, like I said, a seven pound point brisket on since 5 a.m. I did a salt brine overnight. I'll roll that now. So look, we have a, a full blood line Wagyu a brisket, about seven and a half pounds. We're just gonna do a light trimming on it and any hard fat is the first thing that's gotta go. You know, always remember the uh, soft fat uh, can serve a purpose and also will, will uh, break down and uh, render to some flavor. But this hard fat is just going to sit there. It's, uh, you know, it's not going to taste good. It's a bad texture. So we definitely want to get rid of that. And also what I'm going to do is get rid of any kind of dark meat on the, uh, on the brisket that I don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to just get rid of it. Always, you want to try to keep your brisket aerodynamic, kind of. You don't want to create any pockets. You want that smoke to just kind of flow over the brisket, right? So you want to kind of keep it aerodynamic. Alrighty, look, and that looks pretty good to me. And basically what I'm gonna do is a, a salt brine, okay? So I'm gonna hit it with some nice kosher salt and get it in the fridge uncovered to rest overnight. And you do wanna get this on a, uh, on a wire rack because you want that air to circulate all around the brisket, including underneath. So uh, wire rack will do you nice. You know, and look, you think you're putting too much salt on. Well, that just means to put a little bit more. Anytime you're working with a large piece of meat like this, especially on a uh, on a, a dry brine or a salt brine, you just want to uh, you want to get a good amount of salt on there. And look, basically what that's going to do is going to draw the uh, moisture out of the meat, and uh, it's going to do uh, magic things to the uh, brisket. That's for sure. and look it is about 4 30 a.m and of course i forgot to roll the uh, camera on the uh, black pepper but basically what i did you take it out of the fridge and you want to get some black pepper we are going with a uh, that kosher salt brine and also a black pepper and that is it oh yeah You know, we got a uh, we got about 15 inches of snow due starting this afternoon, so I'm figuring this brisket is going to make for a uh, a nice dinner tonight, and also some killer uh, sandwiches in the uh, a.m. Oh yeah. And basically, I'm going to run this uh, brisket at 250 Fahrenheit. I'll take it right up into the stall. But before you wrap, you want to develop that nice color. Once you get that nice color, even if you're into the stall, then it's time to pull off and then wrap. I'll wrap it in some butcher paper. And then I'll take it right up to toothpick tender. It's going to be a great day. 
But before I cut out, again, the brisket has been on for two hours. I want to take a, a quick peek. Come on. So look, she's setting up nice. And again, we're going just with a salt and pepper, right? I salt brined it overnight, like I said. And in the uh, AM, I uh, just hit it with some uh, black pepper and put it right on the pit. Man, and she is looking good. Look, I'm not gonna spritz it yet. That uh, little pepper came off on my uh, finger, so the rub is not quite set up. I'll give it another half hour and check it again off camera, and I'll give it a, uh, probably give it a quick spritz at that point. Look, so basically what you're doing here is you're checking for any hot spots in the grill, right? You want the, uh, well, you want the meat to be cooking nice and evenly. You don't want any burning of the uh, meat. And uh, also you want that rub nice and set before you start to spritz, which basically means when you uh, rub your finger on the, uh, on the piece of meat, you don't want any rub to come off. That means it's uh, setting up nicely. All right, guys, look, here's a little update where we are. We are at the uh, five-hour mark, and the uh, pit's doing a good job, man. We are about 25 Fahrenheit out here, and uh, no wind to speak of, but still pretty chilly. And she's at 248 right now, so she's been bouncing a little bit, you know, 255, 248, but she, for the most part, she's hanging right at that 250 mark, again, hour five, so that's pretty, pretty good, I think, and what I want to do here is take you in on this uh, brisket, and let's uh, take a look at it, I'm going to get a little temperature check, and uh, we'll also check the uh, color, oh, Alrighty, look, so she's about 140 Fahrenheit, which is about where I expected, but you know, more importantly than the uh, temperature of the uh, brisket is the uh, bark, right? We want to develop a good color. We want to develop a nice bark before we uh, wrap it. And so I think in that aspect, we are looking pretty good and uh, we're gonna let it run another hour or so, and then we'll uh, come back and give it another look. So look, we are at hour six, and I did take a little peek, and that bark is coming along nice. That color is really starting to come together. So let's go in and uh, take a look. I'm gonna flash up some pictures of hour three, four, five, six, and seven, and hopefully you can see the uh, difference in the uh, color of the uh, marks. Oh, yeah.
Guys, look, we are seven and a half hours in, and I did take a, uh, a peek, and I'm definitely happy with the color. I haven't did a, a temp check, but I'll do that right now. Remember, though, you are cooking to color, not necessarily temp. You got to get that bark developed before you wrap it, or it'll never develop, right? So let's, uh, let's check it out. Right, guys look we're right at that stall obviously right seven and a half hours in and uh you know we're 165 170 i do believe i'm going to get it off i'm going to get it wrapped i'm going to get it back on the pit and finish it up Alrighty, there it is, and I am definitely, like I said, I am definitely digging the uh, color. And remember, when you, uh, it's not so much important to uh, have a temp in it as you're bringing it up to the stall or bringing it to color, but after you pull it, right, you know it's 165, 170. When you pull it, at that point, you want to get a uh, probe in, and you want to kind of match that 165, 170, so you know you're not in a thin part, you miss the, uh, the proper temp, so that's a, a little tip for you. And now I'm just gonna go with a, a little bit of water moisture. like wrapping a present, right? And you wanna get a, uh, you wanna get a nice tight wrap. All right, so now I'm going to uh, probe it. And again, we're looking for that certain temp that it was when we pulled it off. And we'll just uh, give that a minute. All righty, and there you see my uh, Weber Eye Grill 2 is showing 161 Fahrenheit. I believe that's about where I was when I was uh, checking it. So we're gonna get this back on the pit. I'll probably bump it up at times to 300 just to move it along. Um, we do have some snow coming, so I definitely want to get this uh, moved along and done. I'm hoping to get it done in about another two, three hours maybe, and then rest it for an hour or two for a hell of a dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, so that's it. Next time I will see you will be a toothpick tender. Oh, All right, everybody, look, that is it. We knew it was coming, and here it is. We are about 11 and a half hours in on this cook, and she's reading at a 203 Fahrenheit. But what I want to do now is just get you in and get a little uh, readings in a couple different spots for myself, make sure we're probing like butter, and off all that checks out, we will get it in the cooler to rest. Oh yeah. Oh God. <laughs> All 
I mean, she's definitely probing pretty good, so I'm going to get it off. I'm going to get it in the cooler, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, look, that's it. We will see you inside, hopefully, in two hours. All righty, here we go, and it is 12 hours in total. Now let's see what we got. I got a dog, obviously Molly, and uh, two cats walking around. She's definitely got the uh, jiggle wiggle for sure. I mean, I'd say that's uh, pretty perfectly cooked. The only thing I would have did different was probably let it sit for another couple hours. But, hey, you got to eat. You got to eat. I'm going to take a nice chunk right here. Cheers. You know, it's got the, uh, with that dry brine that I did overnight, man. I think that was key for this. That is the first time I've ever dry brined a... Uh, a brisket man and I'm definitely gonna do that from now on I mean the uh, moisture and the uh, salty crust on it uh, with the pepper man that is all you need this is one of the uh, definitely one of the better briskets that I've ever cooked and I am gonna definitely enjoy it it's got a great you know pulls right apart This is 100% definitely worth the uh, 12 hours effort for sure. Freaking awesome. And as you can see, I got Molly here. I got two cats there and I got the wife there. So I'm going to wrap this video up. I'm going to leave a links over here to some other brisket cooks for you to check out. I'm going to roll Patreons over here. And until next time, we will see you soon.